What up, George? Hi. What you said? I said hi. Yeah, man. See, everybody, this is Format. I'm live from Washington, D.C. George? Yeah, live from my girl's old bedroom. Don't, I don't <laughs> want to hear just crazy. shit now, about the color George was of bringing anything. my attention because you know how I'm always fucking up on Facebook, everybody. I'm like, I don't follow that shit like I should be following it. But George was kind enough to put a contest out there. And well, not necessarily contest. A bunch of people who follow our Facebook group, and like, right. if you're not part of our Facebook group, you need to go join our Facebook group because the guys over there came up with a great idea that we should have a question and answer a whole entire show. That's nice. I'm not answering all y'all's monkeys' questions. <laughs> and I don't have time for that shit right. because if you right. go and look at this right. you can't because I deleted the thread. So Kevin got his question. I have my question, and right. I think Kevin's going to go first. I am going to go first. Now, the question that was brought to George and I is, our, is damn, I said, the question that was brought from George and I is from, is from, <laughs> is from John Cream. And he wanted to know, are there any rules from Pride that you'd rather, you know, that you'd like to see come over to the UFC and why? And George, real quick, I'm going to have you answer this question and see which, which rules would you want to come over from Pride? I mean, the, the, one, the one thing I loved about Pride was mm -hmm. they had the 10-minute first round. Right. I think that just changes your game plan a little bit. I, it makes things a little bit different. Right. Um, and I also like the style. I like the, the boxing ring as opposed to the cage. Right. I, just, I don't know. Nothing. I enjoy nothing more than watching like a 255-pound guy go careening toward the edge and all these little baby hands come up and try to keep him in the Baby or the, the, the Right. Ring. But right. I, I'd go with the 10-minute first round. I, I like that too. Um, there Another thing that I liked is uh, – and there's going to be, a, you know, obviously the knee, knee into the head and the soccer kicks, it's very violent. You know, I mean, obviously MMA is a violent fucking sport. But I do like the fact that if you could kind of knee a downed opponent. And, and why I like that, the one reason I do like that is because when you get people that are getting lazy and they're sprawling in and all of a sudden they go to the ground, they have a chance of fucking, you know, getting fucked up. You know what I mean? Right. And, uh, I mean Go ahead. Because I mean, think about it. If Chael Sonnen comes in with a slop, and I'm just using him because he's just the first. He's a wrestler, about, right? But any wrestler, any wrestler who would come in, but Matt Hamill, right? If Matt Hamill came in with those half-hearted shots and knew he could get kneed in the head, right? It, he probably would come in with a little more effort or be a little more timely with his shots or make him a little sharper. He wouldn't take lazy shots. He would come in aggressive as fuck every time. You know what I mean? And he, and he would think about it twice, especially if it was somebody that was, you know, good with knees. Like someone like a Vondelay Silva in the past and probably was nasty with shit like that. So that's yeah, that would be my thing. I mean, I would probably want to bring back as many times as in, we've heard how violent it is. I'd probably want to bring back knee and a uh, downed opponent. Yeah. As violent as it is, it would end the fight much quicker. It would be. And then you don't have to worry about all the extra abuse that the fighter would take. Exactly. Now, um, George, what the hell was your question? Cody Doodoo Brown. Cody Doodoo Brown. Came up with Doodoo the question. Brown. And I'm assuming when he says this, he says, who's worse, Roger Goodell or Dana White? And I don't know if you mean like as a personal human being, as a boss, but I'm going to assume as the role that we all see them in. Right. And, and Roger Goodell is the commissioner for you folks across the pond who don't pay attention to NFL football. He is the, the HNIC of the NFL. That would be the head Negro then, in charge, even though he's not a Negro. And then you have Dana White, who, for some reason, all you people out there think I look like Dana. Um, it's not even flattering. It's not a compliment. Right. I don't like it. Um, me, I think Dana White's way worse at his job than Roger Goodell. I'm going to agree with you. I, I think he's horrible. If, if you're comparing those two. Yeah. Um, I, I, and, and, you know, and George and I kind of touched on this, you know, before the cameras turned on. And, and, and the biggest thing that we both agreed on is that Dana White is 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 controlling and is starting to turn his commodity in more into a monopoly. And that's the thing that George and I both disagree. I mean, both agree on that we do not like about what we see in Dana White. And and having these fighters who are not who have not earned their right to a fight especially outside of their weight classes or having not the best person that's, you know, moved up and earned a shot at the title fighting. So that's the thing where it says, go ahead. We, we've compared it before, and it's just like, it would be like in the NFL, just get rid of the playoffs. Right. Week four, after week four, we're just going to pick whoever we think is going to draw the best and make us the most money. They're just going to play the Super Bowl season over. Exactly. Done. Right. And, that, and that's, to me, that's the direction that the UFC is moving in. Whereas Roger Goodell... I don't necessarily agree with all the shit that he's doing. You know, I think some of his, his punishments are stiff. Some of them, I'm like, what the fuck? Is he trying to be, you know, is he trying to control, you know, does he have too much power, you know, and use, you know, go too crazy with his authority. But 
what were we saying, George? The bot- he's, he's at least doing it under the guise of player safety he's, most, most of the things. He's trying to protect the players and protect why we all come to watch football. And I, I totally understand that. But, again, some of his decisions suck. And plus, I don't under- – that's got to be the only company in America besides even private companies right. that have to answer to a board of directors. Exactly. But this dude is judge, jury, and executioner. Right. So, I mean, to, to answer Cody's question, I would say Dana White by far, but but, Co- but Goodell's got to be running a close second. D- Goodell's definitely running a close second, but like George said, I mean, I when I look at those two and, and, and being in control of the organizations, I, I, I just think – at the end of the day, Roger Goodell is doing it. He's still trying. He's not trying to destroy the entertainment aspect of his sport. You know what I'm saying? He's he's not trying to take away from what the fans really want to see. I mean, obviously, people want to see some good hits and stuff, but he's definitely looking out for the players' best interest. You know? Well, I'm going to tell you what. And speaking of entertaining, we had one yet another entertaining week of football. Oh, uh, yeah. The Top shit was crazy. The 1 o'clock to the 8 o'clock. I mean, the 8 o'clock game was embarrassing if you're a 49, 49ers fan. Right. The 1 o'clock game was embarrassing if you're an Eagles fan. I don't know who played at 4 o'clock because I was too angry at that point to even turn on the TV. But <laughs> right. I mean, we just had another really good weekend of football. And, I, and for me, mm-hmm. I think Russell Wilson just won himself rookie of the year. I, you know what? It's, it's funny. And, and George and I were talking about this early. Russell Wilson is, you know, the first six starts, his, his last nine starts in contrast to his first six starts, are crazy. I mean, when you look at his stats, his win loss percentage, his quarterback rating, um, what he's doing with his legs, what he's doing with his, uh, you know, as a leader, um, it, it, it's so good that it's overshadowed the fact that there's another rookie starter on the defensive side of Seattle that's a first year guy who's their, their linebacker who's fucking running the show, but no one's talking about him because he's being so overshadowed by Russell Wilson. And they brought that up last night that this guy is a rookie. He's a starting linebacker for Seattle and is fucking nasty. Leads the teams and ta- leads the team in tackles, and everybody's like, no one's even talking about him because Russell Russell Wilson. What's his name? That's just it. I, I, I can't exactly. tell you. Exactly. You know, <laughs> I can't tell you. But getting back to the point, this is one thing. Well, go ahead, George. What what makes you, you think, do you think Russell Wilson deserves to be the rookie of the year? Me personally, yeah. I mean, I think, I think I'm not, not going to say. Right. How to, I'm trying to figure out how to put this. He, he's, he's on level with Russ, with uh, Griffin in his running. Right. I'm not, I'm not saying he's better. Right. I'm saying as, as athletic running go mm-hmm. and just looking from the running aspect i'd say he's top three right top four right i mean i'm not saying he's the best i would say running quarterback robert griffin is number one i take him even over cam right i think cam newton robert griffin and russell wilson are your top three running quarterbacks exactly um i, I, I mean you could argue whichever one you want to be first right but i think some of the passes that russell wilson makes um they're on level with Andrew Luck, but what makes it even more impressive is he's not throwing the ball as many times as Andrew Right. Luck, so he's making his passes count that much more by not throwing all the incompletions. Now, he's also got a stingy-ass defense right. and a hell of a running back behind him, so I'm not taking any of that away, but I mean... I will play... I, I will cut you off and play devil's advocate right now. Not that I'm disagreeing with you completely, but I will say this about Russell Wilson. Seattle went 8-8 eight and eight with Tavares Jackson at quarterback last year. Tavares. You know, I just saw Tavares Jackson. Tav- I think he was the dude at the mall ringing the bell asking for money. What, at the Piggly Wiggly? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just oh, saying. I'm just no saying. Anymore. Tavares Jackson, everybody. Eight and eight with Tavares Jackson. That's what Seattle did last year, okay? And so you got to take that in consideration. That's one thing, okay? Now. Let's talk about I'm not let's fuck RG3 because I know you guys are sick of me talking about RG3. I'm not even fucking talking about RG3. Let's talk about Andrew Luck. Okay? <laughs> George laughs at me, you know what I'm saying? Because George would be like, Kevin, if you fucking say one more thing about RG3. No, I no, but I mean you have every right. RG3's in the argument. Yeah. I mean, but but again, in my opinion, and like I've said it before, RG3 mm-hmm. out of these three quarterbacks, in my opinion, runs the simplest offense. And what I mean by that is look, it's an NFL offense. It is complicated. <coughs> takes the ball. He turns. He reads the defensive end like he's been doing for the last four years at Baylor. Uh-huh. He either hands the ball off or he doesn't. Yeah. He looks down the field if he's throwing. He makes one to two reads and then takes off running. Right. But then again, he also has Alfred Morris behind him. So, I mean. I will say this. The running game is probably top two in the NFL. It, I mean, last, like, as, of, as of this week, it's, it was number one in the NFL, the rushing game. Oh, my bad. So, I mean, and, and this is the thing. Roger RG3 did show us this week because you can start seeing with that knee brace. 
He hobbled. He's only had four picks. He's thrown more. He's thrown as many passes as Russell Wilson. People don't realize that, but he realized he showed you that he is a pocket. He is a pocket passer, and at Baylor, he was a pocket passer because he sat in the pocket. He only ran and scrambled twice during that game. You know when we played the Eagles yesterday, we like I was on the fucking team. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but let's talk about fucking Andrew Luck, okay? Everybody is like, uh, forgot about Andrew Luck. I mean, obviously, stat wise, you know his stats aren't crazy, but. He has thrown the ball 500 fun- some fucking times. And you're going to have more picks. You're going to have a lower com- uh, completion uh, percentage in most cases. But you got to look at the good things that he's done. He took a team that was just complete fucking horse shit. And he's found a way to make them become winners. And he's also found a way to bring them back seven fucking times this year. That's a lot to be said for that shit. You know? And he's bringing the Goonies back. He's bringing the Goonies. Because he does look like fucking sloth from fucking the Goonies. Hey, you guys. Anyway, I hope I never run into a guy on the streets. But uh, um, who's your MVP? It's going to be interesting. I, 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 I don't know when they give out rookie of the year. But right. if they wait till after the playoffs, I think whichever one of these quarterbacks gets their team further in the playoffs. Because we have uh, potential to have the first time ever in the history of the NFL three rookie quarterbacks in the playoffs at the same time. Right. That would be, that would be crazy. Now, let me ask you this. Playoffs. I mean, the team. Every, every, playoffs. Every week. People changed their mind. I think one week we were saying every people, everybody, not just George and I, but I think everybody was saying, okay, the Patriots are the team to beat. Houston's the team to beat. The 49ers are the team to beat. Now people I are saying, see, think the Patri- I still think the Patriots are the team to beat in the AFC. Mm-hmm. I think it's harder in the NFC to pick a winner because Houston shows you <coughs> that if you take away their running game, they can't literally can't do anything else. I, the Shops game is so predicated on the run, it's not even. Funny. It really is. I'm going to tell you what, man. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go out right now and tell you who I think is going to be in the Super Bowl. Okay. You want to hear? Yeah, I'm going to tell you my reason why. I think Green Bay, because all of a sudden they're looking good, and Aaron Rodgers is a fucking proven and seasoned quarterback, and he's, his, oh, their defense is coming back. And uh, I think Denver. And why I say Denver is because. Peyton Manning has never had a fucking defense like he has in Denver right now. And I'm going to tell you what, they're looking at being the number one seed. If they win this week and Houston drops an L to Indianapolis, now Denver has the home field advantage throughout the playoffs in the AFC. And let me tell you something, Denver's defense is better than the Patriots. And the Patriots' defense is suspect. And when Peyton Manning is running that fast offense and you're up in those mountains, it, you're, you're going to see some fucking nostrils flaring, some motherfuckers falling on the fucking ground and fucking hyperventilating because he's going to fucking <laughs> run those fucking boys up and down the field. I'm saying right now, Denver and fucking Green Bay on Christmas Eve, I'm making that prediction in the Super Bowl. You got anything to say, man? Um, Shut your mouth, I'm Negro. Going with San Francisco and Denver. You're going with San Francisco and Denver. Is that if Alex Smith comes back? Right. Because it, it, when I looked at the stat line and I saw Frank Gore only had six carries, I was like, you guys got away from your game plan. Yeah. I think when they got down 14 nothing, and then they blocked that field goal and then they were down 21 nothing, yeah. they thought that it was the Collar Kaepernick show us why you were a beast at Nevada throwing the ball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just think they got away from the game plan. Yeah. I think defense and run games <clears throat> wins championships, and I don't think there's a better defense or run game in the when they play it, like the the thing that's exactly. the, when they when they play their game and they if somebody gets them out of their game, it's a wrap. Right. If they get behind. Harbaugh's play calling goes out the window. It, and I don't know why. And Seattle did that last night. I mean, the thing is, is with the thing. Oh, here's a question: Does Vernon has anyone found Vernon Davis? No, no but I, <laughs> that he was out. Got destroyed. Right, and that didn't that hit looked pretty good to me. Any Ed Reed hit. Didn't look too bad. I mean, they're, they're, some of these hits, they're like, they kind of, it's, it's almost impossible not to lead with your fucking head. But if you're throwing your shoulder into somebody, you know, and you're not hitting them in their helmet, it's like a clean hit. It's like now it's getting to the to point. Me, if, if, as long as you're not doing this and leading like with your head straight down, right. you, your head is going to naturally run into somebody's head if you're throwing the shoulder, even in their chest. That hit last night on Vernon Davis, and I wanted to see the 49ers win. That hit last night on Vernon, on Vernon Davis looked clean as shit to me. Huh? That, 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 when they saw Vernon Davis, their, their vocal leader, their mouthpiece, their, mm-hmm. their guy, right. get up and go, What the fuck am I? Which way did he go? Which way did he go? Which way did he go? I think at one point he was on the sideline going, I'm Batman. Right. <laughs> that man was dumb. 
<laughs> he was fucking out cold, Shorty. He was. And he walked him off. I think he's got a concussion. Somebody will correct me if I'm yes. wrong. But uh, the, the one thing is they, they did show, hey, you know what? And, and this is not just Seattle last night. It was New England. You know, and George made a point of that when we were talking on the show, talking about Colin Kaepernick. New England, San Francisco last week had a crazy lead on the Patriots, and they managed to give that shit up. And that, the last two weeks, the suspect part of the 49ers team has been the defense. Yeah, the, the de- quarterbacks are slumming. I, I don't know. I just, I would like to see the 49ers get in there. If they don't, if it's not going to be them, I'm kind of with you on the Packers. My biggest problem with the Packers is their lack of a running game. Right. Because Aaron Rodgers poses no threat of breaking the pocket. Right. And they no. have Ryan Grant back again. Yeah, there you go. But you know, I'm, I'm there. They called me up last week. I'm just saying. Yeah. I know y'all think I got jokes. Like George's mom is a nasty ass fullback, Shorty. I'm telling you what, because she just makes holes like shit, Shorty. You go through the three holes, it's a wrap. No one's. Yeah. And don't let her get in the secondary and be running in front of you because she'll just fly in the cornerback. I'm just saying. Anyway, we, we should wrap we this shit up. This? Yeah. Yeah, man. All right, everybody. We're-